back porch fairly soon. I was woken up this morning by crazy high winds. And actually, we were all woken up. And Michelle said, yeah, there's going to be some high winds for about another hour or so. 48, 49 knots on the water, 60 mile an hour on land. So we got up and I said, you know, I'm going to go grab your pillow from outside so it doesn't blow away. She bought this pillow to sit on these chairs here. This chair is soaking wet, so I'm just sitting on the edge. I didn't get a chance to wipe it down yet. She's like, no, I already pulled. I already put the put pillow in last night. I said, okay. She's like, maybe we should grab the furniture because it was it was it was windy. I should have recorded how there were sheets of rain blowing through the parking lot. Fortunately, the landscape crew does a really good job here, so there wasn't like a bunch of tree limbs and 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 shrubbery that was questionable. So like honestly, there's nothing on the ground like. Looks good. But, uh, yeah. So now uh, it's subsided. I think it's it's past. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by. Uh, hang on. Let's see if I can zoom in. Let's see if I can zoom in and catch this so you guys can see it. I don't know what that is. And of course, my phone doesn't want to zoom or focus so far away. I don't want to I don't want to say it's a UFO or uh whatever the new term is for whatever that could be. But uh it was a flashing strobe light sequence that I had never really noticed before. You know, aircraft typically have red and green and, you know, they, they kind of blink. Well, this one was like strobing and in an area where I typically don't normally see aircraft. And it's like, I would know because I'm out here pretty regularly staring off into the distance don't judge uh if i had time i would have thrown my drone up to try to get a better view which actually i did that the other day because michelle was telling me about a the road being blocked off by police and a lot there was a lot of police activity and a lot of police activity and fire trucks and EMS ambulance so I just threw the drone up and without even having to get in the car drive around ask questions poke around I was able to see what was happening uh, we were gone last week which would have been a great week to be here we were gone and we went to Tampa Clearwater Orlando we went to Cozumel Mexico we were on a cruise and uh, we had Michelle saw on the local news that they were going to, there's a shopping center over here that was going to be, it's going to be, it was purchased and it's going to be demolished. And then ultimately a new grocery store is going to come in. And before they did that, they were going to run some tests. And these tests were going to look like fires, a lot of smoke, but ultimately it was training for the f local fire department. They were given permission by the new owners to do these tests before demo. That would have been really cool to fly over with the drone and catch that footage, but we weren't here. So I was unable to do that. It was literally the same week that we were gone. That would have been, that would have been epic. But actually I was reading an email this morning that I received from a viewer, hopefully a subscriber, viewer on Instagram and I thought it would be good to share with you all peace brother I just saw one of your videos about 
everybody leaving Florida on YouTube today. And I'm reaching out because I just moved to Florida from New York and am solo in my journey to get ready for what I feel is coming and need to connect to other humans who know about this and the territory that makes sense to homestead, to which is what I want to do. I see folk partying it up and oblivious to what is about to happen and feel sick that they won't be prepared. Then on the other side, I do think we must enjoy life, but myself have been quite isolated and need to make lots more money to take part in traveling. I just started an LLC for travel and work remote full time and taking part what life has. Just reaching out now before any more time goes past, I'm a 56-year-old sister with a 25-year-old prince in New York City, and that is currently rooming but plans to purchase a home in mid-Florida. Hope you can give some suggestions on how to get involved in higher activity and connections to other enlightened humans. Well, I would say... Uh, Probably the best way to connect is to do exactly what you just did. If you if you see someone out there who you can relate to, feel comfortable with, perhaps maybe someone who's doing something that you would like to be doing yourself, then by all means, you know, reach out and uh, try to connect and start to develop and build that relationship. I always find it very interesting and very shocking. The answers you get to the questions you ask. But most oftentimes, if you don't ask the question, then you're probably never going to get the answer. Most of the time. Uh, but what I wanted to do was I wanted to share with you all uh, what I shared with this person. Because I looked at their profile on Instagram and... I like it. I like the fact that they've started a business. I like the fact that they have an LLC. I like the fact that they're trying to get into travel and they're trying to drum up business. But I also think that today, in this day and age, 2023, at the beginning of what could be described by some as a world economic collapse, ultimately uh, starting a new golden age, a new golden era of how business will be conducted and people will spend the money that they have, um, especially in light of the conversations that Michelle and I have had here recently about the cost of living and about the flood of institutional um, liquidation of property hitting the markets, about the increased competition uh, in different sectors of the economy in different niche markets, uh, primarily right now being real estate and especially real estate as it relates to travel, travel expenses, lodging, hotel accommodations, Airbnb, Verbo, short term rentals, and more than likely going to affect the longer term or midterm rentals that we would typically see from snowbirds in popular tourist, you know, summer tourist destinations. Or winter, because I guess the snowbirds go south for the winter and they go north for the summer. So either way, vice versa. But um, I don't think it's really going to work the same way that it has in the past. So it could pipe up. It could quite possibly take more than just having a business and uh, posting that this is what you do, because ultimately... If a business is to be successful, like really successful, and I'm talking not just producing sales and revenue, but actually making profit, making it worthwhile, then um, you're going to have to be better than your competition. And again, we're at a time where we're going to experience increased competition. So um, I just shared a link to a video of Kara and Nate because they just recently Good. traveled to Singapore. Uh, it's funny. It was a 13-hour flight 
to Singapore, from London to Singapore, in Singapore Airlines first class suite. It was like a two bed suite. It was, oh man, I think it was $20,000 per ticket, I think. And they got two tickets. So 40 grand to fly from London to Singapore, 13 hours in a suite. Ironically, Michelle and the kid started watching. You know, after we finished our Patreon members interactive live chat, live stream, um, Michelle started watching, the, and the kids started watching Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, and that takes place in Singapore. And interestingly enough, I think the flight there was the same flight in the same suite that Kara and Nate uh, just experienced and just shared on their channel just a few days ago. But more importantly, there was a link or a promotion, a sponsorship, a paid promotion uh, brand deal that they have had that they typically have in all their videos. And they are travel freaks like anything travel. They know they've been traveling for seven years. And they actually have a new channel devoted specifically for travel and saving money on travel, maximizing credit cards and points and bonus opportunities. But in this video, I noticed they had a new sponsor of a travel agency. And I'm looking at it. I'm thinking, well, you know, based on the DM I received on Instagram and you wanted to get into travel and looking at how the business is set up and structured and the marketing and advertising in comparison to what Karen and Nate were connected with, you got your work cut out for you. You got your work cut out for you. We are moving towards an age, an era in which AI, not only will everything be done online, but every more things will be done with less people. And AI is ultimately going to manage and operate so many different businesses. While being able to extract and uh, compare data in seconds to ultimately find the best, most logical, economical, cost savings, lowest price travel accommodations without having to pay an employee to do it um, and increase the ability for profit because of the limited overhead. Literally code, okay? Literally code is what you're paying for if you're operating that business. So as a travel planner you're going to have to step up your game to the nth degree to be better or however you want to look at being better may be to stand apart and separate yourself from this new tech this new evolution in business now i'm going to have to make this video a little bit shorter than normal because um I need to get ready because we have another members only interactive live stream live chat coming up in just uh, a few hours. So I need to go ahead and get ready for that. What we did was we did one last night, which was Sunday at 6 p.m. Central. We're going to do another one this morning, Monday at 9 a.m. Central, just to make sure that everybody has a chance in their schedule to join. Uh, no pressure, no obligation. And the conversation can go anywhere. And I would imagine, based on how the conversation went last night, probably how the conversation will continue this morning. But that's just it. Again, reaching out and connecting to people who have similar interests and who are uh, ultimately exhibiting doing the same things that you have interest in doing, learning about, or could potentially help you in your path, on your journey. Uh, a lot of the conversation often steers towards YouTube. Because YouTube right now is a great and it always has been a great opportunity to earn extra money. Uh, and, you know, it's a fun hobby as well. It can be a skill that you can then master that would help you in the future, in business, in employment opportunities. I mean, honestly, right now, uh, I feel as though I could probably go and answer the call of many businesses looking to grow a presence online with social media or even those who don't know and I could present it to them as an opportunity and I could 
essentially use my YouTube channels as my resume and command a premium to allow these companies and these businesses to expand their reach uh, globally uh, at a fraction of the price that they probably pay for marketing and advertising and pay-per-click ads and all this other inbound traffic that increase their landing costs and reduces their overall profit at a time where you know the average consumer and their discretionary in, uh, income or available discretionary spend in their budgets is decreasing uh, consumer confidence is waning uh, credit card balances are increasing and being maxed out so not only do you have to be better than your competition, you have to be, um, you got to be better than your competition to get that opportunity, but you're going to have to be swift because the target market has been reduced. And much like we discussed yesterday, you're, you're really shooting for kind of two, uh, two different demographics. You're shooting for the super low and the super high. Because kind of in the middle is really where they're feeling the, the biggest squeeze right now and just barely keeping their heads above water. And so the ones in the middle are really looking for the super low cost options of anything out there. Um, and then the ones on the on the high end of this, again, this K-shaped recovery where the rich keep getting richer. And you guys know how it goes. Um, but on the high end, they're like, well, we've got the money and we will spend the money, but only for the best, only for the highest quality. Not to say that this is a great idea or a sound investment, but I just saw recently that Pharrell has a one million dollar Louis Vuitton bag. But if the if you got it like that, then, you know, a, you know, a five thousand dollar bag would not even you know, scratch his interest at, in the least when he's looking at a one million dollar handbag, which is kind of odd to say Pharrell has a million dollar handbag. I didn't pay him for that kind of guy. Now, hopefully later on today, Michelle and I will get together and bring you guys another podcast where we discuss the housing market and also the ill effects that it's having on real estate agents as they are finding it more and more difficult to close and go under contract to even make it to a closing uh, because there are so many homeowners out there who feel trapped, locked with these golden handcuffs of low interest rates that they are afraid to sell and ultimately move on and buy elsewhere in fear of buying at a higher price and having to pay higher interest rates. So if you're interested in that, then by all means, make sure you subscribe and make sure you have your alerts and notifications turned on for all of our video uploads. Even if you're a subscriber, double check and make sure your notifications are still turned on because apparently YouTube has been turning them off without viewers consent. But more importantly, I wanna discuss uh, further about what we were talking about, about business, about starting your own LLC or making money uh, to purchase property, buy a home, start a homestead, prepare for whatever it is you want to prepare for. Everybody's preparation and everybody's goals in life, everybody's um, vision for where they see themselves, hopefully they have a vision for where they see themselves, is going to be different. Uh, obviously, you can Hang on, we got a jet taking off here. Obviously, uh, the choices that we make or we have made or plan to make in the future may not necessarily align with everyone. Uh, but I think all of them can be used as a tool and a way to learn and gain a better understanding and plan and prepare for what you want to do moving forward, whether it's because you like what you see or because you want to avoid some of the things, headaches and mistakes that others have made. But it says here, and this is according to the Motley Fool, the Ascent, a Motley Fool service, why you should focus on passive income and not a side hustle. So, they say that while a side hustle requires additional time and effort, passive income allows you to earn money while you sleep. And when you generate passive income, you set up a stream of revenue that can keep earning for you long after the initial setup. 
And with passive income, your earning potential is unlimited. It's not limited by your physical presence or the number of hours in a day. Now, what I'll probably end up doing is going over this in full detail. Hopefully this jet's not too loud, guys. I, I thought it was done, but it's still firing up over here. We got a lot of jets over here, a lot of private jets, a lot of military jets. Uh, we even had a um, Chinook parked over at the airport over here. I never realized how huge a Chinook was until it was sitting there right there where I could see it. Um, the uh, same helicopter that G.I. Justin flew when he was in the Army. Pretty cool. Really cool. Um, a little intimidating, but really, really cool. So, um, but what I, I'll probably end up doing is I'll probably end up doing a full deep dive on this on Patreon for the members. And... I think what's most important here is realizing the difference in side hustles because a lot of people have side hustles now on top of their primary jobs, job or jobs. They may not even refer to it as a side hustle. They may just refer to it as, you know, another job or part time job or whatever it may be. A lot of people have this very platform, YouTube, TikTok, social media as a side hustle. Right. OK, so let's just compare quickly here the difference between YouTube as a side hustle and a popular side hustle being uh, Uber or DoorDash right so uh, with DoorDash Uber any rideshare gig you're going to have to make money through actively delivering whether it's a passenger or, or a food product or whatever it may be and then rely on tips Whereas with YouTube, it's a little different because there are multiple ways in which you can earn revenue. Um, and the beauty of it is, is at a certain point, it will start earning revenue without you having to actually do it. Whereas with Uber or Rideshare or Grubhub or DoorDash, Postmates, if you're not actively delivering, you're not actively making any money. You see what I'm saying? And it's funny because uh, we were asked last night by the members on Patreon on our live chat and they said and we had a lot of folks there it was a lot of fun everybody had their camera turned on and we really got a chance to like lick, like just talk to you guys face to face and just have real conversations and the question was is there something special about a car why are so many why have I seen a lot of YouTubers recording in their car and the answers uh, there's a variety of answers and reasons behind why that could be the case, but another one could be just that. Your side hustle is based on and relies on your car. Therefore, as you sit and wait for a fare or a Walmart Spark order or Uber to pop up, you have that time in your car where you could be recording videos, maximizing, multiplying your effectiveness at producing revenue. So sitting in a car, it just makes sense instead of just sitting there and wasting time. Or I even had a friend that I recommended. He told me he had no time to record videos. I said, well, you got an hour commute each way to and from work. You get two breaks and a lunch. You telling me you don't have time to press record for 10 minutes. Regardless, it would have been in a car and, you know, Ultimately, with that, if you start building that and you start growing that, eventually YouTube can become a passive income stream because I've got videos that are years old that still get views. And if they're still getting views, that means they're still making money. And there are multiple ways to make money on videos besides just YouTube ad revenue. But at the end of the day, it started from a side hustle. So... I just want to clarify with Motley Fool saying that you should focus on passive income, not a side hustle with you should focus on a side hustle producing the ability to generate passive income, plain and simple, because there is really only one way to generate passive income without actively working to do that. And that would be by inheriting money. Other than that, even buying a lottery ticket to win and maybe get an annuity or win for life and get paid every week require the active act of investing into buying that ticket. So passive income just doesn't show up. You can't just 
say I want passive income and just automatically have it. You have to work to create something that's going to ultimately continuously produce passive income. Um, for instance, Social Security, retirement. you got to work to pay into it to then have it later. With that being said, this can be done. This can be accomplished. You can do it too. And from a side hustle. Uh, for instance, uh, Doug DeMuro. Doug DeMuro, he started by making YouTube videos on cars. Very, very basic, simple car reviews. Grew tremendously. Then he came up with a car auctioning website called Cars and Bids. All of this. The YouTube content that he was creating was a side hustle to him writing for Jalopnik, which I think was a side hustle to him working for Porsche, which then he created a side hustle of cars and bids. Again, continuously working to build and grow only to then have cars and bids be able to produce passive income, much like his YouTube videos are producing passive income, but then getting to the point of which he sold cars and bids and... I want to tell you exactly how much he sold it for. And it says January, according to the Rob report, January of this year, 2023, Doug DeMiro gets $37 million investment in his cars and bids. So not bad for a side hustle that produced passive income that was then eventually uh, a huge windfall. But the key is you got to start and you got to focus on that big picture of the future and not just the right now, not just the how much am I making per hour? How much am I making per ride? How much am I making per whatever single widget it may be that is finite? The, the, the big picture of passive income is how do I make money while I sleep? Appreciate you guys watching. If you made it this far, again, please smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned. We got a lot more videos coming for you guys. Heading to Atlanta soon, so that's going to be a lot of fun. We got some cool stuff lined up that I want to show you. Make sure you check out the other channels and the free links in the description down below. Until next time, you guys take care. Be safe. I'll see you real soon.